um, well, I saw the birth of Five Points. It was called the Fun Factory long ago, run by some fella that nobody liked, and hardly anyone went to paint there. But when he abandoned it, Mears took over, and he's been a wonderful director over the past, I believe, six years. He's attracted more and more talent and famous people from New York that give the place, you know, um, stability and, and, and what do you call it, credibility. Um, it is, it's attracted artists from all over the world to come and paint there. It is the only nonprofit space run by graffiti writers for graffiti writers. All are welcome from all age groups, skill levels, and it's an amazing place. All kinds of film crews and folks want to come there. And that is the only kind of funding that Mears ever receives is, is a small location fee from um, professional film crews, commercial film crews that want to come there and do a little something. And I try to bring a lot of business there. I, I bring all sorts of uh, work to the space and make sure that Mears gets a little location fee because the dedication and, and, and love that Mears has for the space and without getting any kind of payment for the time and, and, and grief and headaches that, that that place gives him is just phenomenal. I think that he should turn it into a museum but then that means uh, also getting a staff of assistants and administrators that can help run this space. The danger with that is that when you start accepting funding, outside funding grants from the city or you know um, private donations, sometimes there are strings attached and it might not be as free and welcoming as it used to be. So things could change. I mean um, it, it should become um, a, some sort of a museum but it is only the exterior space. Um, the building is set for um, renovation, it has to be fixed. The landlord is a little bit iffy. He wants to change the space into a high-rise building, wants to sell the building. It's just kind of up in the air. Uh, he would have to purchase and own the building in order to make it a museum. It's very difficult, the real estate and the, and the ownership. Um, the man could sell the building next year and where would the museum go? So it is a difficult issue, but I think it is worth looking into. And the importance of this place, uh, like for the whole graph world, is it like the, the Louvre of, uh, of, of the graph uh, uh, world, is it? Um, yes, Five Points, you would consider it like the Louvre of, of, of um, the graffiti world. Like I said, um, people come from all over the world. Young folks save all year long just to come to New York City and be able to show off the best of their skills that they can on a wall in New York and then be able to go home and say, this was my vacation. You know, did a little shopping, a little sightseeing, but I painted at five points, you know. But the best of all is to paint one of our subways. Yes, they indeed want to do that. And if they can get away with that, you know, that's terrific. But otherwise, most people want to paint in the daytime and not get arrested in a foreign country or any of that. that that's no fun. That'll ruin anyone's vacation, mind you. So five points it is. I think it's um, a terrific place for young people the older generation, I think it's, it's great that they've found themselves. Now, to watch the old guys, they're all pushing 50, they're from the early 1970s, and they're bald and big and fat, but when they're painting together and they've discovered each other, they're like teenagers again. You should see their faces and they light up and glow like little kids and they're with their spray paint and a, and, and a beer and some spray paint and they're just having so much fun. It's it's just terrific. It's, it's become almost like... Um, uh, an, an organization, a, a, a group, a sense of belonging, some sort of a, you know, the, the, <laughs> the loyal order of Moose Lodge where, you know, old guys with similar interests can get together and just talk a little nonsense and have some laughs with some friends without the danger of having to run from the police because they're too old for that now, but uh, they, they just love it. You know, they didn't hang with each other when they were way back in the day. They come from different parts of New York. They probably never even met. But they're the same age group, they have the same interests, and then they just click and get together so well, and they bring their grown children, and for once their children actually think, wow, daddy's like cool, ooh. So it's, it's great to see that, that generation thing. <laughs> Very last week. we witnessed that, exactly that. <laughs> you and saw Ink, them guys, he right? He fell from the ladder even, because he had too much fun, and then, uh, <laughs> I don't want to go to the hospital right now, let me finish, and like you said, they were just hanging around laughing, having a beer, and having big fun. Oh, two mm -hmm. days ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, last question, like um, um, the the the, the, the anti-apartheid thing. Like today, we, we saw we witnessed one uh, uh, big uh, one graffiti from from. Um, uh, um, it's a South African 
President uh, Nelson Mandela. Was that a, a big issue also for you? Was it, was it, did it touch you like uh, in the late 80s as a topic? The, I, um, mm, the apartheid movement yeah. did not really, or any other kind of social or political issue, did not really infiltrate the teenagers. Only when you know you started to go into your early 20s that the world suddenly you know you fo come into focus and you realize what was going on so there were older guys like Lee and Blade some of the that they were doing political statements and and saying things like that the rest of us were just you know decorating the subways having a good time that didn't matter to us you know we had our own injustices in the world here I encountered my own racism and a lot of my minority friends did too to see it halfway around the world it was just very surreal it was not it was not real to us I encountered it when I in, in, went above ground into the real art world and other artists were activists, older people, they were doing installations and, and protests and all kinds of stuff and you're like, wow, where is South Africa? And then you start to learn a little bit more and then you realize what a huge injustice to have to have incarcerated Mandela and, and what they were going through. Pay, you know, we pale in comparison to what these poor folks were going through in other parts of the world. And there again, there's the realization of the world, people starving in Africa and, and, and this injustice and that one and Cambodia and Vietnam and, and it's all sorts of horrible things going on in the world and, and the artists were protesting here but the graffiti writers, no, not nearly as much. We had our own, you know, and racism going on on our very own streets, very own blocks and, 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 and city.